The Huntington Library Art Museum and Botanical Gardens, known as the Huntington, is a collections-based educational and research institution established by Henry and Arabella Huntington in California. The first thing I noticed walking around the Huntington is the versatility of flowers. On every side of the road there are beautiful flowers and interesting sculptures. There are three gardens in Huntington that cover 210 acres – Japanese garden, desert garden and Chinese garden. As a former arts student, I love visiting places that include interesting architecture, and as my visit to Huntington showed, it's one of them. The first area we explored was the Chinese garden – Liu Feng Yuan or the Garden of Flowing Fragrance, is one of the finest classical-style Chinese gardens outside China. Ponds with lotuses, bridges, Chinese plants, and exquisite architecture decorated with symbols referring to Chinese literature and art. The Chinese garden in Huntington was inspired by the gardens of Suzhou, a city located near Shanghai in southeastern China. Architecture is central to the scholars' gardens of China. Despite their differences in size and formality, the buildings in the Huntington's Chinese garden are all structurally similar. Each consists of a stone foundation, wooden columns and beams, and a roof of tile or thatch. The buildings are decorated with exquisite wood carvings, ornaments, and Chinese calligraphic inscriptions that were written by more than 30 artists from China. Rocks are fundamental for Suzhou Gardens. The stones seen throughout the Chinese garden in Huntington are a type of limestone traditionally harvested from Lake Tai near Suzhou. These rocks have been renowned for their curious shapes and many holes. In 1910, Henry Huntington began acquiring an extensive collection of outdoor sculptures, personally deciding on the exact location for each piece of garden stature. Most of them date from the late 17th and early 18th centuries. In addition to the gardens, the Huntington houses an extensive art collection focusing on the 18th and 19th century European and 20th century American art. The collections include extraordinary examples of decorative arts and folk art, paintings, prints and drawings, photography and sculpture. The Huntington's collections are displayed in permanent installations housed in the Huntington Art Gallery and Virginia Steele Scott Gallery of American Art. We only had time to visit some of the collections, but here are some highlights from what we saw. I always say that the beauty of art unfolds when others view it, and you can appreciate art for reasons important to you. Art is subjective, but it shows versatile perspectives and understanding of the world, thus multiplying variations of personal perceptions. Every museum art gallery creates a visual statement accessible for viewing by those who step inside. The Huntington's collection of American art began with Henry and Arabella Huntington's purchases of American paintings, sculpture and decorative arts to complement their growing library holdings related to American history. 
In 1979, a gift of 50 paintings from the Virginia Steele Scott Foundation dramatically grew their collection, resulting in a separate building that opened in 1984. I love the feeling of special, peaceful happiness and gratitude that evokes in me when I'm surrounded by books. And what can be a better place to experience these emotions other than in the library? The Huntington Library is one of the world's great independent research libraries, with more than 11 million items spanning the 11th to the 21st century. The library's main exhibition hall showcases some of the most outstanding rare books and manuscripts in the collection, while the West Hall hosts rotating exhibitions. The Huntington possesses one of the largest collections of British medieval manuscripts in the Western Hemisphere. Most of the library's medieval holdings were produced in England or Europe. The Huntington has a rich and varied selection of European and American cartographic material that supports historical and geographical research. Looking at all these remarkable books allowed me to connect a little more with the history of humankind, feel appreciative of the progress we made, and reaffirm my belief in the importance of creating, writing, and putting words on paper so they can live longer and help our descendants understand our modern state of mind.